Hello everyone and welcome back to Cheesy Code. It has been a long time that I have created a video. So this time I'm creating a video on JavaScript and the topic that I'm covering is the promise. In real life people do promises. Like a person says, I promise you that I'll do this work for you. So either he keeps his promise and perform the work that he has promised to do or he fails to do it. So similarly in case of JavaScript, we have promises. When we have a task to perform asynchronously, in JavaScript we say that let's create a promise out of it. And once the task is completed, we send the result status. There could be some cases in which the browser is not supporting it, but all in all, every major browser is supporting it these days. So let me show you a basic example of a promise. Here I have created a code snippet just to show you in sources tab. Now this is the syntax of promise. We assign it to a variable. Like here I have specified it as do something like this is a task that I'm going to perform. Now when we create a new promise, there are two parameters that are being automatically passed on by JavaScript. Now once our task is completed, we call this method resolve. If you want to send some data along with it, then we pass on the data as well. Otherwise we can simply just call resolve. Similarly, in case there is a failure or there is any error, in that case, we call this method reject. Now currently it is written directly, like I'm calling resolve and reject. Usually these two methods would be called like this. If some condition then there would be else part so both of them will not be present at a single time so either resolve will be called or reject now in worst case scenario if both of these are present without any if else case the first one would be considered so what happens when we resolve or reject a particular promise so let me show you what happens what we do is do something then we have dot then method this would be called when our promise is resolved Similarly, there is another method catch. This would be called in case of any rejection. So here, as you can see that I'm using arrow functions that are being introduced in ES6. These are called syntactical sugar. It just eases out the way we are coding. So this particular arrow function gets interpreted as function, the parameter like this. So using an arrow function is a shorthand of using function. I would be using only arrow functions in this video. In case you want to learn the ES6 syntax, I would be creating a video in future. Let me just revert it. So similarly, I'll be using arrow functions over here. It takes response as a parameter, arrow function. And then I'm just writing down response. Similarly with the catch method, So this is my syntax for promises. If I try to run this, here you can see that success message is printed, even though both of them were present, which should not be the case in the ideal scenario, but it takes the first one to be called. So here in this case, resolve was called and we got this in response. If we had rejected this promise, then the code inside my catch block is executed. So that's how I use promises. Now here you can see I have created a promise directly. Now a very important thing that we need to take care in case of promises that even if we don't write this code, the code inside this will be executed directly. Like in case of functions, let me comment this one as well. Now if I save and run this. You can see that this line of code is executed, but in case of function, it is not executed till I actually call this method. So this is something that you need to take care of when we create a promise, the code inside it gets executed immediately and the methods that we have dot then and dot catch, these are only called when we resolve or reject a particular promise. Now to save you from this immediate execution, usually promises are created inside functions. So I'm going to show you another example like this. Now what is happening here is in this case, I have a function inside this function. I'm returning a promise. So until and unless this function is called the code inside my promise will not be executed. So this is a general practice that we use. We don't directly create a promise, we return the promise through some function. Also in our function, if there is a parameter, 
like id and somebody has not passed id in that case if if id is present then we return this promise else we can directly resolve or reject a promise so i can use this line to mimic a promise which i have not exactly created but i can straight away resolve a promise which will help me in calling the code inside these two methods if i don't write this line and i change this here i'm not passing any id so a promise will not be returned in that case i have not returned a promise but i have written dot then and dot catch method which means my code will break let me run this cannot read property then of undefined because here it is not returning any promise even if i try to return something from here in that case also there would be an error dot then is not a function because we have not actually returned a promise so in that scenario if we don't want to create a promise or we don't want to create an api call or something like that we just straight away have to resolve a promise then we can directly write promise dot resolve or in case of any failure if you want to mimic a failure in that case we write promise dot reject so this scenario happens when on the basis of some parameters we try to reject or resolve a promise this comes really handy now i'm going to clean this up i have written down some extra code here let me explain you what i have written so using this code i'll be explaining you what is chaining in promises how we can chain promises one after the another when one promise is resolved i'm going to another promise just like that so here i have created another promise promise 2 it is using fetch api that is also part of es6 it also returns a promise this is being used in es6 for fetching json or and loading any file will not go deep in this fetch api it's just to show you that this api also returns a promise in earlier days when we used to say chaining in that case the code used to look like this now for every promise i have then and catch method so inside then of this promise i am calling another promise then there is then of that promise then catch of that promise so it was kind of mess and it is a traditional way of doing things now in these days in es6 days what we do we have a cleaner approach for chaining so i'm just commenting this one now this is a cleaner approach we have dot then method over here over here over here then in the last we have catch so in case of any promise failure directly this code would be executed and further execution will not be done suppose in this case this is my promise it is directly being called without this code execution but once we resolve this it will come in this then function now from here i am returning another promise it has its own resolve and reject then when this promise is resolved this would be called here i am creating another promise from this method when this resolve is called it will come over here then we'll console dot log successful with this message and in case of any error inside these if any one of them would have been rejected in that case straight away this code would be called so let me show you how i'm going to run this this next line is to show you when we call something in promise it is an asynchronous task so in that case line after the promises are executed first like here this text is printed on the very top after that this is called then this is called then in the end i have console dot log successful with the response response is success 2 which shows that this promise is resolved if i reject the very first promise and now i try to run this you can see that anything is not called and it directly came to fail part that's how chaining works so you can use chaining to do something sequentially and you can have a single catch for any of the failure so if one thing fails it fails everything in the chain what if we don't want anything to run in sequence so there is a way to do it i'm just commenting it we have something called as promise dot all what it does it takes an array of all the promises so here i have provided this promise the first one then after it promise two then i have provided this function i'm calling this function because it returns a promise so here we have three promises now the beauty of this promise dot all is these three promises will not run sequentially 
instead they will run parallel so when all the promises are resolved in that case this single then is called if i run this code oops let me fix the first line now the code ran successfully now here you can notice that in my response i got an array so this array is basically the response of all the three promises in an array format so i've got success response from the fetch api and success2 success2 is coming from this promise so we got an array of response inside this then so all your code will be executed at once and after every promise is resolved only then this would be called in case of any failure this would be called as you saw earlier now there is another way of doing it suppose a scenario in which i have multiple promises but i don't want to wait for all the promises to get resolved if any of them is resolved i just want to execute some code so here in this case we have another function of promise promise dot race what it does it doesn't wait for all the promises to be resolved if any of them is resolved this then method is called and this time the response is single not an array so if i comment this thing and if i run it now you can see success is called so first promise is resolved at the earliest so the response from that particular promise is printed on the console so that's all about promises for now you can try out various ways at your end if you face any problem you can ask us we'll be happy to reply and if there's something that i have missed out you can let us know we'll be happy to hear that so all in all in this lecture what we have learned is what is promise how do we resolve and reject a promise how can we chain promises how do we sequentially run promises how can we run promise in parallel that's all we have covered in this video so thank you so much for taking out time for this video i hope you liked it also i'll be coming up with more such javascript videos subscribe to our channel if you have not done already thank you for watching